Bom dia e bem-vindos à celebração do Dia Mundial da Língua Portuguesa no Bristol Community College. Good morning and welcome to the first virtual World Portuguese Language Day celebration at Bristol Community College. My name is Carlos Almeida and I am an associate professor of Portuguese, the director of the Luso Centro and the coordinator of the Portuguese English Community Interpreting Certificate program here at Bristol. Thank you so very much for joining us today. We hope that you continue to stay safe and healthy during these pandemic times. So next year, we can celebrate this day in person in Fall River campus. We have an exciting program lined up for you today. But before we start, I would like to invite Dr. Laura Douglas, the president of Bristol Community College and a great supporter of the Luso Centro and all things Portuguese to welcome you all. President Douglas, you have the virtual podium. Thank you so much, Carlos. Benvindo, benvenido, and irashaimase. Irashaimase is welcome in Japanese. It's great to see you all today from so many schools in our region. I want to congratulate you on navigating your way through a very challenging year, sometimes with remote learning and sometimes in person. And perhaps the best thing that you've learned is that you can learn anywhere. That is a wonderful life lesson. Learning takes place in many different settings. Learning takes place where you are. I'm delighted that you have remained focused on your education and passion for language learning. I love learning languages too. When I was a seventh grader, I began studying Spanish and continued, uh, continued studying Spanish through college uh, because I loved it so much. I even did a semester in Mexico, an experience that changed my life forever. In my early 20s, I began studying Japanese and I went on to live in Japan for seven years. Language skills have opened many, many doors for me, both personally and professionally, and they will for you too. I've already gotten a little bit of a preview of today. In fact, I saw on YouTube uh, just the other day some presentations from our students at Global Learning Charter School. They were amazing. So I know you've got a great day ahead with all kinds of wonderful presentations. I hope you'll enjoy the day from your virtual um, homes. So congratulations on your learning uh, language learning, and I hope that you'll keep up the great work. And for those of you who are not graduating from high school, I want to see you here next year in person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, President Thank Douglas. You. Uh -huh. But even uh, some of those students graduating from high school, we want to see them come to Bristol to study here. So thank you so much. Now a brief note about the Luso Centro. Established in 2002 at Bristol Community College by my friend and colleague, Dr. Jose Costa, as part of the first Bristol Presidential Fellowship, the Luso Centro is a language and cultural center designed to strengthen an understanding and knowledge of the Portuguese speaking communities. Luso Centro's mission is to educate Bristol Community College community and to serve the wide needs of Portuguese speaking families. The Luso Centro offers a Portuguese English Community Interpreting Certificate program 
which prepares bilingual students to work as interpreters in a variety of community settings, including hospitals and courts. So if you have anyone interested in becoming an interpreter, please refer them to me. Moreover, the center offers the Serie Cultural do Luso Centro, a series of Portuguese culture events sponsored by the college that provides events in collaboration with Luso-American organization in the community and other institutions such as the Center for Portuguese Studies and Culture at UMass Dartmouth, the Pedro Pires Institute for Cape Verdean Studies at DSU, the Institute for Portuguese and Lusophone World Studies at Rhode Island College, the New Bedford Whaling Museum, among others. These events include hosting international exchanges with visiting Portuguese scholars, sponsoring book launches, conferences, lectures, and of course, the annual World Portuguese Language Day when area high school students studying Portuguese come to the college to celebrate this important day. The main sponsor and partner of the Luso Centro's event is the Camões Institute through collaboration with the Consulate of Portugal in New Bedford to which we thank for their continued support. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Shelly Pires, Council of Portugal in New Bedford, to say a few words. Dr. Shelly Pires. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Raising awareness uh, about uh, the international standing of the Portuguese language, its cultural diversity, and how it can benefit those that speak it have been, um, has been a pillar of the mission of Institute Camões and all of the embassies and consuls of Portugal around the world. The formal designation uh, uh, by UNESCO of May 5th as the World Portuguese Language Day is, is a major achievement to us all and an important stepping stone for our next goal the recognition of the Portuguese language as an official language of the United Nations. This ambition, it is supported by important facts. The Portuguese language is spoken by 260 million people. It is present in five continents. It is the fourth most spoken language in the world and the most spoken language in the Southern Hemisphere. It is the fifth most used language online, and it is a work language for numerous international organizations. The opportunities in the workplace are significant, opening the way for enriched CVs for those seeking a career in banking, academia, travel, multinationals, politics, diplomacy, translation services, education, health, NGOs, and the list goes on. Having this in mind, I hope that everyone here may be inspired by the example and um, life testimony of our main speaker, Dr. Elena Sanchez Martins. And it is also important to remember that the Portuguese language unites nine unique countries part of the community of Portuguese speaking countries, most known by, by its uh, acronym CPLP. Our thoughts, our feelings are shaped by the same language and it touches every area of knowledge, expertise and creative production. It is a living symbol of the importance of dialogue and cultural diversity. A final word to express my appreciation for the role of BCC and Luso Centro, the amazing network of Portuguese programs, schools, teachers, and students 
did make Massachusetts one of the best states in the US to learn and experience the Portuguese language. Also for the Portuguese American Postgraduate Society, for its assistance in the preparatory discussions of this year's event, and to Art Institute for introducing us to the talented Karina Gomes performing today. To all a wonderful World Portuguese Language Day. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Now, before I introduce our keynote speaker, I would like to take just one minute to recognize and thank some other people and collaborators who made this event possible. Anna Miranda from the Art Institute in New York, Keith Thibault and Stephen Rice from Bristol Television Services, Dennis Baldwin from Bristol Side Lab, Kevin Spirler and John Fornoff from Bristol's Marketing and Communications, Kali Devara, Lisa Noel, Bristol's Arts and Humanities Administrative Assistance, and the Portuguese media, o Jornal, Portuguese Times, Rádio Voz do Imigrante, WJFDFDM, and the Portuguese Channel. I would like to also put a plug for our Bristol Financial Aid Office that will be offering a FAFSA free application for Federal Student Aid Workshop this afternoon at four. I did send the flyer to all the teacher and your students. So for you to share with your students, I hope they take advantage and attend the workshop this afternoon. It is now my pleasure and honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Elena Santos Martins, who will be talking about reflections of a Portuguese American physician. If you allow me, I just want to say a few words about Dr. Elena Santos Martins, was born in Lisbon, Portugal and moved to the US as a teenager. She is board certified in internal medicine and her career spans over more than two decades, including medical practice, administration and teaching. She graduated from UMDNJ, New Jersey Medical School in 1997 and then trained and work at Cambridge Health Alliance and Harvard Medical School for 13 years. She has been practicing in the North Shore since 2012, and she is affiliated with North Shore Medical Center and Mass General uh, Bright, uh, Brigham. And she just opened her MDVIP affiliated private practice at the Cumming Center in Beverly this past December. She is also a member of the advisory board of the Saab Center for Portuguese Studies at UMass Lowell and the co-founder and chair of Dr. Edward Leitão Memorial Scholarship Fund. Dr. Sandro Martins remains one of the few Portuguese American physicians in active practice in the greater Boston area. Please welcome Dr. Sanjo Martins. Olá, bom dia a todos e a todas. Good morning to everyone. Um, it's um, really an honor to be here today uh, sharing this wonderful um, world uh, day of uh, Portuguese language uh, with all of you today. And thank you, uh, Dr. Carlos Almeida, for um, your invitation and the invitation from your team. Um, so we can celebrate this day together. Um, and um, it's really an honor to be here with all of you. Um, so um, to start, what I, what I thought I would do today um, is really share with um, 
all of you uh, my early journey and hopefully serve um, as inspiration uh, for the students um, uh, watching us today. Um, since I know that a lot of the students um, in this event <clears throat> are high school students and um, uh, college students, I thought I would share um, a little bit of, um, of, of my experience uh, with that. Um, and, um, and, and then also I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, importance of Portuguese language and culture, you know, in my career um, and, and, and a way to, um, to pay it forward, which is something that I'm trying to do. Um, so um, 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 actually, um, you know, um, my resume might sound impressive, but um, it took me a long time to get where I am now. Um, and it has been a journey for of over 30 years. And, and it actually started in Portugal. Um, I came to the United States during Christmas break of my senior year in high school. So that was uh, challenging in many ways, as you can imagine. Um, and I, when my family uh, relocated from Portugal to the United States, they came to Newark in New Jersey, as you may know, it's an area with um, a, a very strong Portuguese uh, presence. And um, so I started my um, uh, January, so my second uh, end of the, of the uh, senior year um, in this new school. And um, it was challenging in many ways, as you can imagine. Um, I, I think that for me, um, one of the main barriers at the time was really the lack of help. Um, um, there was a counselor that was um, um, assigned to help the, the Portuguese student. And unfortunately, that counselor who was of Portuguese descent was not very helpful. Um, and that was very unfortunate. Um, I also did not get credit, you know, for advanced classes that I had um, in Portugal. So um, I could not even make it to the first 50 in the ranking year in my school. Um, and I did not really know that I could advocate for myself. Um, I did horribly on the SATs. Um, I think I studied for two days. I didn't even know what the SAT was. I had to take two buses to Jersey City and do the SAT. Of course, I did badly. Um, and, and the culture at the time, you know, 30 plus years ago, uh, really did not value higher education. So I had these things going against me. Um, and um, I always said as well that I will never, ever, ever, ever wanted to be a doctor. I actually wanted to be a vet, um, but um, that presence, that reality in um, um, seemed um, um, uh, not to uh, fit with my new um, uh, reality, you know, living in Newark, New Jersey, and out in the countryside in Portugal. So, um, so things were tough, you know, at um, at that time. But um, so I ended up by taking what now very um, commonly uh, we call now a gap year. It's a very common thing that people do now. Basically, for me, was working uh, that year, and I was very lucky that my brother, who's a year younger than me. Um, actually had um, one more year to go in high school and he had a counselor uh, that um, worked with the mainstream students and that counselor was the one who helped us out. So um, the reason why I'm sharing this is um, that, um, you know, if somebody were to look at me 30 some years ago, would not anticipate you know, everything that I've been able to achieve. So if I was able to do it, you guys are gonna be able to do anything that you set your minds to. Um, so, um, so from high school and um, we then discovered um, actually um, um, a community college. And um, the, uh, and I'm so happy to be here in this event by Bristol Community College because I started my higher education journey at the community college, uh, UCC um, Union Cotty College in Cranford, New Jersey, uh, which for to this day is still my alma mater. Um, and um, even though there were some barriers um, to, um, to even attending community college at the time, um, like no role models, we really did not have a lot of people in the Portuguese community who had gone um, on to um, um, higher education. Um, 
just nut and bolt stuff like how to get there, right? There was no public transportation. We had to buy a car, my brother and I, uh, to go. Um, and then the cost. Um, my parents actually had to take a loan so we could go, even though it was much cheaper than a four-year college. And, and I worked at the school and I got a few scholarships. Um, but, um, but I was completely um, uh, amazed by the academic community that I found there. Um, I was very blessed to have excellent teachers. Um, and this particular teacher of mine, Dr. Potter, had a tremendous influence in my life. Um, he believed in me. Um, he invited me to do research with him. And he was the one who um, um, planted the seed in my mind that I could go to medical school and, um, 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 and encourage me all uh, the way through. Um, um, I was able to present at, at, at Alpha University in New York, you know, the, the research we were doing with melanoma um, in these uh, very um, uh, cute fish uh, that we had. And, um, and, and that really was the, 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 the spark that I needed, you know, for my career. Um, and then I just grabbed it with all I had, right? I had, I was involved in student government. I was involved um, in, in other clubs, the international club. Um, I um, explored other interests that I had. Um, 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 a bit against my will, I became the president of the camera club. And um, that actually helped me later on. And I'll, I'll let you know why in a few minutes. Um, it was through the school that I did some trips, you know, through these clubs that I started, uh, um, that we had a chance to go to Washington and to Pennsylvania. It was my first time outside of, of New Jersey because of the school. Um, and through all this, you know, I made friendships that are still lifelong and, and still some of my uh, best friends are folks um, that I met um, at Union County College and have a very special place in my life. Um, just to give you an idea, Dr. Potter attended my um, um, Union County College graduation, then my Rutgers graduation, my medical school graduation, my wedding, and my um, daughter's christening. So uh, it was a very, um, very powerful mentorship and, 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 and friendship that I had with Dr. Hugh Potter. Um, and then um, after um, uh, community college, um, I, I went to a four-year college, but um, I, I, I'm so happy to see the work that Bristol Community College has done, the fact that you guys have the Luzo Center, you know, the work that uh, Professor Jose Costa has done for so many years uh, before passing on the baton to Dr. Carlos Almeida. And, and, and this is my plea to the students, you know, use these resources, you know, use this that's right in your community. Uh, and uh, you can use this as stepping stone for whatever you wanna do in your careers. Um, so, um, so the college that I went to was also a local college, was Rutgers, which is the state college, you know, in New Jersey. And um, I continued to work, you know, throughout, throughout college. Um, but it was there at Rutgers that I um, continued to uh, be part of this academic community. Um, I was able to be a Rutgers scholar. I was able to, um, um, uh, to be accepted to a couple of honor societies that still look very good on my CV up to this day. Um, I was um, also uh, very lucky to start doing research at the Neuroscience Center. And um, funny story, um, one of the requirements for the application of that particular study was to have some, um, um, some dark room experience. And guess what? Because I had been the president of the camera club at Union County College and knew um, how to work in the dark room, uh, I was able to get that coveted um, um, in a research position um, as an undergraduate. Um, and this is just an example how sometimes you know, exploring other interests outside of your career can actually benefit you in many ways uh, that you might not anticipate. Um, and it was really there at, at Rutgers that my career choice was solidified and I really uh, um, decided that I would go to medical school uh, and did not pursue the PhD program. I realized that research and bench research was not for me. Um, but there were not a lot of Portuguese students. We did not have a Portuguese club at the time. I'm very happy to say that now there is a Portuguese club that's quite robust there, actually. Um, 
but we didn't have that. Um, and I kind of gravitated uh, to um, some of my friends who belong to other minority uh, groups. Um, and I was very welcome in that community. And that also allowed me to do very important uh, networking that connected me then also to uh, the medical school and the clubs and to, um, and that allowed me again to continue forming uh, uh, relationships and friendships that have lasted to this day. And, uh, um, and, and then was was seamless. Then I was able to go to medical school. Um, we were very fortunate that the dean at the, of the medical school at the time was Dr. Rui Lorenzo, was the only Portuguese American dean of a medical school in the United States. And, and because the school was in uh, Newark with a huge Portuguese community because of the iron bound, that uh, Portuguese um, uh, community there, um, I really had a leg up um, in terms of getting accepted and to be able to um, 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 to um, um, to represent my community in the class, uh, even though I was the only Portuguese student, you know, in the class. Uh, but I, I worked uh, with the minority uh, uh, department, uh, minority students department, and, um, and we worked on recruiting more students. And I was very happy that for the four years that I was there, the next three after me, we've always had at least one or more Portuguese students um, in the medical school class. Um, and then also nuts and bolts uh, issues, right? For third and fourth year, we do these medical uh, clinical rotations. I needed a car, so I needed to save and eventually get a car, not just rely on rides. And, and of course, the, the school was costly, and uh, I could not have done it without the help of my parents' um, uh, work that I did also. Um, I was also teaching courses at the, at the school, and then some scholarships that I was able to get that were very helpful. Um, but it was interesting that it was at the medical school that I um, uh, became aware that um, I was not seen just as white, you know, um, especially um, as from continental Portugal and Portugal um, in general. I mean, we see ourselves as white and I was not seen as white. That was kind of an eye-opening experience for me. And, and somehow that made me connect even more to my friends um, in um, some of the minorities uh, community. And um, I was able to um, join um, um, African-American uh, medical school uh, student organizations, Latin organizations, there were no there was no Portuguese one, um, and but I was able to represent my school at different uh, conferences of medical students around the country, um, and, um, and 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 travel a little bit um, um, without having to spend a lot of money. And again, those friendships continued. Um, and actually, one of my uh, good friends from medical school was instrumental on this um, my, on this recent decision uh, of my career to open my my own practice. Um, and, um, and, and then being a Portuguese and, and being so connected uh, with the community there um, made me realize that I wanted to continue that uh, relationship and that involvement in my professional life. And I wanted to be, uh, practice, to be practicing in a, um, a community that was Luso-American. Um, I really wanted to get out of New Jersey. You know, I have had enough, although I love New Jersey, but it was time to leave. And I always had this fascination uh, towards Boston. And um, I became completely um, 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 uh, entrailed by what Cambridge Health Alliance could offer to me. Um, even though it was a very small hospital, we didn't even have an MRI machine at the time. And I was coming from a, you know, a a tertiary care center with the transplant center and helipad and all that and there was this tiny hospital but it was very special um, and it became my first choice uh, and I got it um, 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 it had a very uh, strong um, um, academic uh, 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 standing it, it's, it's Harvard affiliated um, and it was smack in the middle of the Portuguese community uh, there in Cambridge and, and Somerville um, and I started working uh, right on my first year of residency uh, during my outpatient clinic at this Cambridge Health Center, which was the um, health center of the Cambridge Health Alliance that was uh, catering mainly to the Portuguese community. And, and again, was there that I continued making these lifelong uh, friendships with Dr. Edley Tao and Dr. Stefano Scales, 
um, that have marked me uh, to this to this day. Um, and then, um, you know, in terms of the career, it was, you know, continued on. I, I stayed on um, at Cambridge Health Alliance um, for another 10 years after my residency. I became the medical director of this Cambridge Health Center for the last five years. I was there, we were able to um, participate in very interesting projects. Um, and, um, and after 10 years um, was um, for different circumstances, um, I had the opportunity to become VP of Medical Services for Community Health Center in Ulster. That was a very um, um, eye-opening experience, but very rewarding. Um, but I realized that min administration was not for me, that I really craved the direct uh, um, contact with patients. So I joined Brigham and Women's and um, I felt a little bit like Goldilocks, you know, um, um, Family Health Center uh, of Worcester was a little too small, the Brigham was really too large, and I was really looking for that happy medium. And in that, um, um, in that search, um, I joined North Shore Physicians Group um, here in the North Shore um, that um, also has a great uh, numerous Portuguese community, uh, especially in the area of puberty. And I've been here uh, since then. Um, and, and I like this community so much, um, but uh, wanting to have a little bit more control about the way that I practice that um, I uh, decided to change gears um, and start my own practice, my own uh, personalized medicine uh, practice um, with uh, affiliation with MDVIP. Um, that allows me to focus on quality versus quantity and allows me to do much more for my patients that I was not able to do in a traditional organization um, while um, continue to be affiliated with Mass General Brigham and North Shore Health Systems here. And my practice, we just opened, you know, in December. Um, I have to say that I'm, I'm very proud uh, to be um, um, uh, the only uh, MDVIP doctor here in the North Shore who's affiliated with Mass General Brigham. And unfortunately, I'm the only one who's uh, a female, who's a woman. We need to get more women um, up here. Um, so um, what I wanted to do now uh, is just to um, share a little bit about um, how um, uh, the Portuguese language um, and, and culture have um, helped me along the way. Um, and in fact, um, it opened many doors and uh, opportunities for me, not just in my education um, uh, path, uh, but also then um, in my uh, career promotion. And, um, and I have to say that um, um, my acceptance to medical school um, although I was a very good student, I think the fact that it was Portuguese and I was part of the community was, was probably a deciding factor that they chose me versus another equally uh, a great student. Um, the same thing for residency. I uh, later became aware that uh, Cambridge Health Alliance was looking you know, for uh, Portuguese American residents and they were very far and few. Um, so I uh, became a very good match. Um, for them the same way that they were matched for what I was looking for, for my career. And, and while my um, time there um, as a leader at the um, East Cambridge Health Center, it also allowed me to participate in very neat projects. Uh, for example, the Speaking Together project, which was a national collaborative of about 10 or so organizations and hospitals around the country um, um, through um, uh, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, um, 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 you know, um, um, sponsorship um, that that allowed me to um, to use my um, immigrant you know background, particularly uh, being Portuguese. Um, on Epic, our electronic medical record, I was able to uh, develop uh, ways on how to document uh, how we were meeting the patient's language during the visits. Um, um, also, um, realizing that depression was so prevalent in our community, especially being an immigrant community, and we had very, um, um, the patients that I was seeing, a lot of them were uh, Portuguese, many were Brazilian. Uh, we all shared, you know, the language, I also had some uh, um, Cape Verdean patients, um, but I, I started a, a study that eventually gave us the excellent award on depression from Partners Healthcare at the time. Um, 
and, and that was very rewarding. Um, and then I was able to participate um, and be a member of the Harvard Medical School Committee on Cultural Competency, um, where I could um, certainly bring my experience and, and help um, in making things easier for, for the students. Um, so that overall was very rewarding um, from a career uh, perspective. Um, but on a personal level, uh, being uh, Portuguese and being fluent um, in Portuguese and, and being very connected um, to, to the community um, also um, is, is tremendously rewarding. I know that I can make a difference in my patients' lives directly. The fact that they can speak with their doctor uh, without the need of an interpreter, um, although interpreters are very important and, I, uh, and it's so, so great that Bristol Community College has the interpreter program because we need more. Um, but having that direct influence and effect in patients' lives is, is tremendously um, important to me. Um, and then I feel that I have a, a, a responsibility to my community, being a physician and being uh, someone that people look up to, um, to um, help educate the community um, in many different ways. And, and particularly during this horrible pandemic, um, I was able to uh, work with WJFD uh, and do a series of radio interviews um, that I hope were helpful helpful to the community, giving them a good, solid science-based information in the midst of um, so many unknowns. Um, from a family perspective, um, I um, encourage my uh, children to um, learn Portuguese. Um, it's amazing that my daughter, Katerina, who's 21 and a junior at UMass Amherst, um, she um, actually decided to have uh, Portuguese as one of her majors, and um, she speaks Portuguese well. Uh, my son, uh, Philippe, who's 17 and is a junior in high school, um, even though he also attended the Portuguese Community School um, in, in Cambridge and Somerville, um, does not really know much Portuguese, um, although he can uh, order uh, when he goes to Portugal a tosta mista with sumal um, and um, and get along that way. Um, but I think it's really important for the communication with elders, with, with the avos, um, you know, the sharing of experiences, you know, of, of, of really enjoying vacations um, in, our, um, um, in our country um, in, in a way that's so much more, um, um, uh, you know, meaningful in so many ways. Um, and then uh, I, I could not uh, not talk about uh, the resources that now we have available. Uh, you know, the wonderful uh, Dr. João Caixinha, uh, who has done a tremendous, tremendous work in our community um, with the Curna Santo Ensino Português um, here in the United States. Um, and the, um, the, the test, the newel uh, test that um, um, the students in high school can take and give them um, equivalency uh, to Portuguese and um, then they can um, use that um, in college. Um, and actually my daughter did that and she was able to um, get equivalency for several classes and made it easier for to have a second major in Portuguese. Um, so as we celebrate the World Portuguese Language Day, uh, I think I gave you um, many reasons um, from a personal perspective um, from a family perspective and hopefully inspiring you to, um, um, to continue uh, doing the same. And, and even though we are from so many different continents, we have our, um, you know, our friends you know, from Brazil, from Cape Verde, uh, from Angola, Mozambique, from Macau, um, and we come from uh, these different continents, we have this wonderful language and, and a lot of things that unite us with, with our culture. Um, and, um, and it's wonderful that we're celebrating that today. Um, um, and, and just very quickly, just to um, let you know how I'm paying it forward, I, I think it's important to make a difference. Um, um, my, my path uh, was a little bit rocky and I had um, the, the, the luck to have people along the way who really helped me and who believed in me. And I think now it's my responsibility to continue that and make it easier for the younger generation. 
Um, so I, I'm involved in many things. Um, I, I'm very um, proud to be a member of the Portuguese American Postgraduate Society who do a, a wonderful job with mentorship and, and community. Um, also to work for many years uh, with MAPS, Massachusetts Alliance of Portuguese Speakers who do a tremendous work and help um, to, in our communities. Um, I'm very honored to be a member of the advisory board of the SAP Center for Portuguese Studies at UMass Lowell. And, 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 and lastly, uh, something that's really, really dear to my heart um, is the Dr. Le Edward Lee Thelma Memorial Scholarship Fund that I co-founded with Dr. Um, Akales in 2015, uh, really in memory of, of Dr. Ed Lee Thelma, who was such a cherished mentor and friend um, who was so well known in the Portuguese American um, uh, um, a community um, in the Cambridge Somerville area he was a, a physician there and, and and really the goal for this fund is to provide uh, scholarships and mentorship to Portuguese American students in New England uh, pursuing medicine and any other career in health um, and we support students uh, from high school you know all the way to uh, graduate school including um, uh, students um, um, applying for residency program so please check it out um, um, and um, what I just like to, to do in terms of final thoughts um, is to, um, 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 you know, put this all together and, um, and leave you with some pearls that, um, um, that I hope you will find helpful and, and hopefully inspiring. Um, and one is to be proud of your heritage. Um, um, many years ago, um, it was, uh, there was this, 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 um, uh, impetus to just get everybody to um, um, to accommodate and to morph and to just adapt to the society. But now there is really this um, 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 this 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 care that's given and this value that's given to our individuality and to to celebrate um, our um, different heritage. So be proud of it and celebrate, you know, where you're from and, and from uh, your ancestors. Um, the other thing that I would recommend is to really learn and to speak and, and write Portuguese and to be as fluent as you can. I think that you'll find that very um, helpful, both in your professional careers, regardless of what you choose, but also in your in our, um, private lives as well. Um, and not to forget to develop a network of support, you know, using your teachers, using your counselors, using your friends, um, and trying to, um, you know, let people know what, what is it that you like. And it will be a surprise that there are um, more people out there who are, who have connections, who are willing to help, who can um, give you some advice and make use of that. Um, so don't hesitate to use your resources and um, to ask for help. Um, and then so also look for opportunities for scholarships and other support that's out there in the community uh, because those exist. And all along the way, continue to be curious, to be adventurous. I think that um, is um, um, something that has served me well. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, um, exploring other interests um, actually helped me then, you know, in my, um, in, in my career in ways that I did not expect. Um, and then continue to give back um, in a big way or in a small way, um, even if it's just among your family, you know, just try to help um, the other uh, people around you um, and our communities will be better for that. Um, and don't forget to have fun while you're doing it. So um, I know my time um, is short, but I just would like to leave you uh, with some pictures of some things that I have um, done. Um, and this was the series of, um, of the interviews for WJFD uh, that we did about COVID. That's me. Um, I worked at the respiratory clinic, you know, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and that was some of the work that I did as well. Um, we hope that those times will be behind us. Um, some examples of some uh, media with the Portuguese Times that has been very helpful as well and very supportive. Um, um, some involvement that I had with uh, the Palcos campaign of make Portuguese count in the US census just happened uh, last year. Um, and then the Dr. Lita Memorial Scholarship Fund, this is our website. Um, we uh, did not accept applications this year, but we'll send more information hopefully in the next few months um, for, um, for, the next, uh, for the next year. Um, you know, check it out. 
Um, and that's me uh, in my new practice um, and um, here at the Cummins Center. And because I cannot do things just by myself, um, here's Paolo, my husband, with whom I was not, will not be able to be where I am. And, um, and, and that's me. So um, thank you so much for this opportunity. I, I hope that by sharing some of my um, journey and my experience that I was able to inspire um, some of you to continue um, and um, not to um, think that it's impossible and that this is just for other people. Um, and um, I wish you all the utmost success. Um, and I'll be very happy um, to help um, any of you if you're interested in going to a health career please feel free to reach out to me and I'll be very um, um, glad to help you in any way I can. And thank you again so much and enjoy the rest of this wonderful celebration today. And again, thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Dr. Elena Sanchez Martins for that inspiring uh, journey, uh, story. Uh, I'm sure you have inspired a lot of the students present in this uh, uh, in this event, uh, and I know you you mentioned um, uh, Dr. Juan Caixinha. Uh, actually, it's gonna be it's a good segue because um, Dr. Juan Caixinha is a, 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 another representative of the Camões Institute, an enthusiastic uh, supporter and promoter of the Luso Centro, uh, being the coordinator of the Portuguese language programs and education affairs in the United States of America. I would like to invite him uh, to, he has a, a few good information actually to pass on to the teachers and students about the Newell exam. Dr. Juan Caixinha, you have the floor. Thank you, Carlos. Can you hear me? Sure, yes. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Dear president of Bristol Community College, uh, Laura Douglas, Shelley Pierce, consul of Portugal in New Bedford, Anna Miranda from Art Institute, Dr. Elena Martins and the Portuguese American Postgraduate Society, distinguished guests and participants, teachers and students. Happy World uh, Portuguese Language Day. Uh, Feliz Dia Mundial da Língua Portuguesa. É também por essa razão que estamos aqui hoje a celebrar este dia. Allow me on behalf of the Camões Institute to express our continued support to Luso Centro and Bristol Community College and to this specific event to celebrate the Portuguese language World Day. I would like to recognize the work of Professor José Costa and Professor Odete Amarelo in promoting Portuguese language and culture uh, through these years, and recently Professor Carlos Almeida. This program has proved to be instrumental to our Portuguese language teachers and students in this region of Massachusetts. And here, let me thank also the Consul of Portugal in New Bedford, Shelley Pirsch, for her good efforts and generosity to facilitate this partnership towards the promotion of Portuguese language. It is our continued goal to promote the Portuguese language in the US and in Massachusetts with the active involvement of our diplomatic and consular network. That includes the financial support to Luso Centro Portuguese program, which presently helps many students to learn Portuguese. Thank you, Dr. Elena Martins for being such an inspiration and role model to all these students and for the beautiful presentation today. Uh, I would like to encourage all the teachers and students to participate on the 2022 Newell Portuguese exam developed by American Councils for International Education. This online exam takes place every year since 2017. It's now on its fifth edition and it's recognized by the AP program of College Board and gives credits for higher education. This year, we have already 316 students enrolled nationwide on the May 17 Newell Portuguese exam and at least 107 Portuguese American students 
received grants from the Camões Institute and from FLAD to pay the fee for the exam. We have grants annually to support you. So there is a financial support to any student that would like to enroll for the Portuguese Newell exam. A lot of students who participate on the exam are attending high schools here in Massachusetts and specifically in Taunton, New Bedford, Dartmouth, Fall River, and so many other school districts. So once again, I would like to encourage you to participate on this exam as it will reward you even if you want to pursue Portuguese language studies in higher education. If you want to find more information on this matter, please write an email to newell at americancouncils.org. So newell at americancouncils.org or check the Newell online, or you may even contact my office here in Boston or the consulate in New Bedford to get detailed information regarding the exam. I hope you enjoy the rest of the event and the concert from Karina Gomes and band. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. João Caixinha for uh, very important uh, and useful information for the students. Now, um, I have the pleasure to introduce Professora Marília Correa's Portuguese students from the Global Learning Charter Public Schools in New Bedford, who are going to talk about Cabo Verde. Portuguese Language Day at BCC apresenta Os Alunos de Global Learning Charter Public School. This is a map of Cabo Verde. There are 10 Ilhas of Cabo Verde. São Antonio, São Vicente, São Nicolau, São Boa Vista, Mayu, Santiago, Fogo, and Brava. The capital of Cabo Verde is Praia. Did you know that the archipelago of Cabo Verde is part of the Lisbon world? Cabo Verde is located off the west coast of Africa. Vamos lá, Cabo Verde. <laughs> Espero poder ter ensinado sobre o aspecto mais incrível do Cabo Verde. Aqui temos música linda dos músicos mais incríveis. Morna é a música nativa de Cabo Verde e é muito parecida com ópera e country. Há muita paixão e sentimento neste tipo de música. Cesária Ebra é uma das mais famosas cantoras cabo-verdianas e é conhecida pela sua música poderosa. Algumas das suas canções famosas São Soldado e Angola. Ela conta as histórias de Cabo Verde através das suas canções e ajuda as pessoas a entenderem como tudo aconteceu. Esse tipo de música é usado regularmente em todos os países e é algo dos que todos devem experimentar. É usado para todos os tipos de eventos, incluindo a apresentações de dança, festas, celebrações, shows e muito mais. Não deixe de ver os imitadores de toda a ilha e ouvir a linda música durante sua viagem. Cabo Verde was suffering from natural disasters and flood shortens, and Portugal did nothing to help them. Partido Africano da Independência de Gina e Cabo Verde was a party that wanted independence for Cabo Verde and Gina Bissau by doing peaceful protests, but Portugal responded by using violence towards them. No dia 5 de julio de 1975, Cabo Verde accomplished full independence. Today we will be telling you about two historic sites in Cabo Verde. <laughs> the first one is the Chapel of Our Lady Fatima. The Chapel of Our Lady Fatima is a historical site for the Cape Verdean people. Cape Verdean people rely heavily on their religion and their lifestyle. People visit this, pla this place to pray. It's a chapel built facing away from the sea. The current church was built by royal order between 1701 and 1707 and was designed by architect Zhao Antunes. Our second place is Fort Real de São Felipe. Uh, this translates to the Royal Fortress of Felipe. It is a 16th century fortress in the city of Cidade uh, Vahala, located in the South Islands of Cape Verde. 
It was built under King Philip I of Portugal between the years of 1587 and 1593. It was part of a system of defenses on Cape Verde to help defend against English invaders. Fogo Cabo Verde is located on the southwestern part of the archipelago. Fogo is filled with volcanic scenes and rich volcanic soil, hence why Fogo was given its name. Fogo means fire. A muitos anos, Fogo became an island by a volcanic eruption which emerged from the sea. A montanha mais alta de Cabo Verde é Pico do Fogo. Esta montanha stands at about 9,281 pés and is located in Chá das Caladeiras, a small neighborhood in Fogo. Other than Pico do Fogo, there are history museums, churches and cathedrals, national nature and wildlife parks, city tours, and muito mais. Another thing to mention when traveling is the Cape Verde moeda. A moeda delas é escudos. É um escudo equals 0 0.011 dollars. Fogo tem café e vinho incrível também. With the natural rich soil, groundnuts such as peanuts, beans, coffees, oranges, and tobacco are grown on the north and west side of Fogo. The Dej Islands of Cabo Verde generally have a subtropical dry climate. The temperature ranges from 25 at 30 degrees Celsius or 77 at 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Its hottest measures do ano são julio, agosto e setembro. During these measures, Cabo Verde experiences the most rain with trace of 6 rainy days per mês on average. Setembro to junho has the most hours of sunshine per day, while julio e agosto have slightly lower amounts of sunshine. The trade winds along the beaches signal significantly cool the islands down, making the weather comfortable and relatively constant all year round, which is part of the reason why Cabo Verde is such a great destination for tourists. Fun fact, some of Fogo's best farmland is actually located at the base of Pico do Fogo. This makes the volcano's eruptions an incredible danger to the farmers living there. Agricultura is one of the most important features in Cabo Verde. Gardening crops include milu, mendoca, bananas, and batatas doces. Other cultivo are cocos, mangas, and café and most important are cana de azúcar and feijoes. Agricultura provides many empregos para pessoas nas ilhas de Cabo Verde. There are fazendeiros e piscas e família jardineiros. This provides a source of comida e dinero para pessoas. As for clima affecting the agricultura, droughts cause abandonment of fazendas. This is due to solu drying up and becoming sand-like and unsustainable for farming. Pescaria is affected by pesca excessiva e climate change. To celebrate the culture of Cabo Verde, I researched several popular dishes and desserts, such as cachupa, slow-cooked stew that is Cabo Verde's national dish, as well as persebiche, goose barnacles that are boiled in brine and considered a delicacy in the area. Bol de couscous, cake made with corn and sugar, is a popular dessert. Lastly, we have dos de papaya, which is a simple but sweet jam made from papayas. It's prepared with sugar, lime juice, vanilla extract, and mashed papayas. It has this very sweet flavor, and it pairs well with queijo de cabra to make a nice dessert. It can also be served on toast for breakfast, and it's quick and easy and fun to make at home. Endangered animals in Cabo Verde. Tartaruga cabezuda. It is a reptile. Its food sources are clams and crabs, and the reason for endangerment is climate change. Tisha, tisha gigante. The type of animal that this is, is it's another reptile. Its food source is fruit, nectar, and insects. And the reason for endangerment is little is known about the population size. Kizomba é uma dança que começou em Angola. Todos em Cabo Verde dançam kizomba. Kizomba é sensual e música. A mona é uma dança, é sensação a dançar, é uma sensação triste e trágica.
Galo Verde faz festivais todos os anos em Belo Curso. Fashion has to reflect who you are and what you feel at the moment, and where you're going. Most women's clothes are from Cabo Verde and inspired by Africans. Women's Kate Cabo Verde dresses are designed and sold by independent artists. As you can see here, women wear patterns, mostly dresses that are very colorful, because that's their style. It's a earth clothing that Cape Verdean or Capo Verde people use to make their clothing. Um, this type of cloth was in the uh, 15th century of the uh, archipelago age. Enjoyed this Virgin at Capo Verde. Adeus. Thank you, thank you so much for that beautiful, uh, inspiring journey to Cabo Verde. Vocês, vocês fizeram-me sentir saudades de Cabo Verde. Bravo! Bravo. Now, uh, last but not the least, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Karina Gomes, a great artist from Guinea-Bissau, who with her band will entertain us for a few minutes. Enjoy the show.
Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Consulate in uh, New Bedford. This is Karina Gomes and my band. We, we are very glad to be here. Thank you for supporting us. Sucuro que cobri no vale. Lágrimas que irsi Inti dentro de um corção de mim
Abriu ali o mar Sossegado Thank you very much for supporting us. We love you. For a Lusophone speaker, my English is not that good, but I will try to explain to you how um, we create this instrument in the 17th century in Guinea-Bissau. It was created by women while they, are, they, they are, were, were washing clothes they created this instrument. We call this instrument Tina. Uh, Tina is, the, is at the same time an instrument and uh, music, uh, musical uh, gender, musical style. So um, the symbol of Tina is unity. Uh, we can we, we make so many things with kabas. We call it kabas. We we eat. In this uh, instrument, we can uh, celebrate um, a different kind of um, ceremony. We make a different kind of ceremony with this instrument. But at the same time, we play, we, we, we build kora, uh, for example, which is an instrument uh, of West Africa. There's a lot of stuff we do with this. But especially, uh, I like this instrument because it's my roots, my family roots from the side of my, of my father. So that's why I always bring it with me just to, just to meditate in that without roots we cannot stand. That's the philosophy. This is a traditional song of the uh, United States, you will just.
Eu só perdão se vos chamando Ao oh, meu Deus em oração E recebo dele uma nova bênção E eu vou mais longe Este trajeto Cada luta é uma lição e Mesmo assim Encontro sempre uma razão Este embalo Esta dança eu giro Wasn't that great? I couldn't resist. I was dancing uh, on my chair. If it was in Forever, I know all the students will jump on the stage and dancing. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, every good thing comes to an end. So we are, have arrived at the end of our program and sorry, no malasadas this year. So, but, and I hope that you have enjoyed our virtual program and please mark your calendar for next year, World Portuguese Language Day on Thursday, May 5th, 2022, which we hope will be face to face. So all the students can jump on the stage and dance with the artists whoever the author is next year. Um, just to end, I just want to thank all the participants, collaborators, presenters, and sponsor of the, sponsors of the World Portuguese Language Day, and wish you all a great rest of your day, semester, and school year. Stay safe. Muito obrigado. Obrigado, obrigado. Até mais.